Hi everyone. Well, I think this is probably, I don't know, the third or fourth start we've made to this. Um, let's hope now that you can see me, uh, you can see the palette, you can see the picture, and we're all ready for a good old painting session. I was just explaining to you, though you couldn't hear me, that we took these pictures yesterday and we kind of weren't, <clears throat> we weren't prepared to do this um, recon really. We, in actual fact, we've taken the car in to be serviced into Penrith, which is just at the northern end of the Lake District. Um, and they gave us a courtesy car and we thought, well, why not have a little tootle, tootle around? So we did that. Um, and of course, I had no sketchbooks, no pastels, no charcoal, no anything to make a mark with at all or on. We just had our iPhone cameras. But I mean, I must say, iPhone cameras are really uh, they're quite amazing, really. I mean, they're not as good as, you know, the digital, I don't know what they're called, SLR, maybe something like that. But, you know, I've definitely got some very good photographs that I can work from, crop and use, and and, what, and this is one of them. I suspect you're going to get a bit sick of seeing Lake District scenery, really. Um, <clears throat> but I won't, I never will. It's just a beautiful part of the world. This is, uh, in case you're interested, called Crummock Water lake here and it goes down the valley and it turns into uh, Buttermere which is also extraordinarily pretty um, but you can see on this that <clears throat> there's a lot of blues as the, the sky obviously has blues in it and just a hue of pink and I don't know where that's come from or why it's there but it is there and then the background as you'd expect is blue and as it comes forward, it we, we begin to get purple hues in it. Now, you can't see this. I can't see it, actually, in this photograph. But the heather was just starting to come out. And there was just a purple cast on, on all, almost everywhere, to be honest. So I intend to... Um, the trees and everything will remain as, as they are. But this large piece here, I intend to add some heathers to that just to jolly it up a bit. And this wall has no place in our composition. Uh, it makes it a bad composition, actually, because it's just taking your eye from there straight out the picture um, without even looking at this. So we, we need to get rid of that, just not put it in and just put a grassy area or, or something similar. So what I have done in preparation for this this is uh, a 16 by 12. I did think about doing it on a smaller size. It would be quicker, blah, blah, use less paint, etc. But I didn't think I could get the details in or do them justice on a smaller canvas. So I've decided to use a 16 by 12. And in preparation, I have gessoed it. Um, well, I'll tell you exactly what I did. I got the canvas, sanded it down, put a layer of ordinary white gesso on it, sanded that down and then added some quinacridone magenta into the uh, gesso put another coat over it and um, sanded that back so I've got a, a really nice smooth surface and the reason that you want a smooth surface for this is there's lots and lots of detail and it's very difficult getting detail if you're trying to go over the humps and bumps of the canvas you know you, you it's difficult even getting a straight line in a case like that so this is I mean, it's not um, super, super smooth, but it's much smoother than the canvas was before I started with it. And I have on here, uh, using my Sorrel transfer paper, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. If you're new uh, to watching these um, tutorials, just message me below. I'll explain to you what um, Sorrel transfer paper is. It's great stuff, as we all know. Right, so... Because we're late, I think it's time to kind of crack on a little bit. Um, I have a reference picture here that I printed out just so as I have something to go on. Um, had we not have been all of a dither, I would have actually brought it up on my MacBook so I could look at that because it's a much clearer image on your computer than when you start to print it out. You lose. It, it's ridiculous how much you lose, to be honest. Um, so let's start with the sky. It's always a good place to start. 
and I just wanted to draw your attention to these. I always like to tell you things or, or educate you in some way if I possibly can. Before we start, I'll just say that Carol is watching. Hi, Carol. And, uh, Thank Dorothy you. Dorothy and Susan. Carol, Dorothy and Susan, like the and three others, musketeers. And others that are lurking in the background. Others that are lurking. Well, welcome to all the lurkers. Um, and particularly welcome, of course, to Carol, Susan and Dorothy. As I say, the three musketeers. Where would I be without you? Well, talking to myself largely. Um, these are uh, De La Roni, the System 3 brushes that I normally use for everything. They're my, my, my favourite brushes. Uh, and these are called Skyflow brushes. Uh, they, there's an inch, a two inch, uh, two and a half. I've got two two and a half for some reason. We, as you know, we're, well, I'd say we're like Scrooge, you know, when it comes to buying art supplies. That's not true because it doesn't matter where you get them from. Art supplies are just expensive. But Mr. Fixit is a great one for trawling the internet sites, eBay, etc., um, or you know, even some of the shops, they close down or they have good sales on things. And he found this set, that one I think I had already, but he found this set of, of these Skyflow brushes and they were very, very reasonable, very reasonable. And they're just, they're, they are for really what they say. They're for big areas that you want to cover quite quickly with paint. Oh, that's brilliant. Mr. Fix-It's got, um, got my image up. Just pick it up. Thank you. That's grand. That's lovely. So, um, so I'm just, for this, it's quite a small area. If you're an abstract artist and you're covering really large um, canvases and you need sort of flat, almost illustrative qualities, these are very good for that too. Uh, that is not my style, as you know. I did actually say to Mr. Fixit this morning, I'm not going to get hung up on details on this one. I'm just not. I'm just going to go, you know, largely put things in place and that's that. And he just looked at me and shook his head and laughed. So we'll see. We'll see how we get on. I'm just going to use the smaller of the Skyflow brushes and I'm going to put a background in of, of blue all over it. And then we'll start building the clouds up, mixing the colours. That we need. This is uh, what is it? Cobalt. Cobalt blue. So same as same as ever. Dip your brush in your water. You'll feel as soon as you do if you have these Skyflow brushes. They're very very soft. They're much softer um, than the other painting brushes. But they do make this System Three for acrylics. So. You'd almost be forgiven for thinking this is a watercolour brush, to be honest, but it's not, so. Karen Smith says hi. Hi, Karen. She was lurking, but she couldn't find where to comment. But she has now. Ah, right. Um, and she says, uh, and there's a face in the clouds on that image. Is there? I can't. Allegedly. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. I've got my. Where is it, Karen? Like upper left, upper right? Just need a bit, make my paint a bit wetter, I think, to get it to slide on. I've been so hung up with pastels uh, of late, and I re I'm, I can't lie to you, I really, really love pastelling. It's, um, I don't know, it seems a bit more direct, perhaps. Uh, this is just water in here. Just, just can't get my paint flowy enough. Uh, I appreciate this is a dark blue, and the sky isn't dark blue, but... It's dark blue behind the clouds, if you know what I mean. So we'll put this um, put this on. Don't be afraid of tinting your gesso. Um, it's a good thing to do, especially with a load of, you know, greens. The uh, complementary of green is red. So if you put down pink, you can see where you're going such a lot 
more easily if you have a if you have a tinted background. So I've, I've transferred the lines. I'm sort of nudging up to them, but to be honest, there's no blue right up to here, so it doesn't you know it doesn't matter how exact. I don't even want to be something like exact, but. This paint's very solid. It's probably soaking because I haven't used it for so long. So I've seen some work that you've been uh, putting up in other groups, in Paula's group in particular. She says upper middle right. Upper middle right. Okay. Upper middle right. Can you see it? I have to fix it. I can't. I kind of don't want to see it because once I do, you can't unsee you it. Can't unsee it. You'd be drawing a face in your clouds. Yeah. N not on that one. Maybe on the the large printed one. I don't know. For some reason, the video and I'm seeing seems to have gone back to the start. I don't know what other people are seeing. All right. It's okay. still streaming. We haven't lost the stream, so I don't know what's occurred there. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, who knows, eh? Who knows? They won't have to endure this twice, will they? Is it likely to stop and jump to where I am now? Well, at the moment, it's in the silent phase. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there we are. That's um, that's the background of the sky put on, and it is bright because it was bright that day. You know. Where the where the clouds had parted and you could see the sky, it was beautifully bright. Oh, cloth, cloth. Said, oh, could just be me. Could you just grab me a cloth from over there, please? Possible. Well, I'm looking. I'm looking now for a face. Maybe it's on the large one. Maybe it's easy to see on that. Yeah. Okay. Where I've just glued them together, or something. So, I'm just going to mix up the colours that we need for the uh, clouds. You can tell it's a long time since I've been using acrylics. By a long time, I mean a couple of weeks because they've all gone sticky. I might need slightly more of that. So, I'm going to mix a blue grey, um, a white grey, leave the grey as a grey. So I've got and a black grey. So I've got lots of different greys on the go. And I'm not going to follow this sky. Sorry, Karen. <laughs> um, you know, cloud by cloud, because that's it's just daft. And it you know, it changes by the second anyway. Um this is just ordinary titanium white. I have, however, got another white, which is by this company called Lasco. And this is called Crystal White. Sounds a bit like drugs, I know, but it's not. Um, and it really is bright, bright white. So I'm, I'm going to save that for the bits of the clouds that really are sparkling, that have really caught the sun. Put that down there. Okay. The brushes that I'm using today are sort of varied, really. Um, I've got them all in here. There's no point going through them, but I will uh, tell you what I'm using as I come to use it. And at the moment, I'm using a, a knife just to mix up some colours. So this is my bluey grey, which there is a you know a little bit of. So that's all that. When you've mixed your paint, try and put it back in a in you know all together if you can. It keeps it more moist for longer, wet for longer. Um, then I'll take some grey and I'll add a little touch of black to it. There's not that much of this really dark grey 
in there. And we can always mix more. It doesn't have to always be the same shade. So, you know, it's uh, we can always mix more. There's not very much of that there, to be fair. What I'm proposing to do, because, you know, look, guys, this is not going to happen in an hour. It just isn't. Um, so what I'm proposing to do, I'm just going to mix some of the titanium white now with the grey to give us a lighter grey, um, is to do one hour every day from now, you know, until it's finished. That'd be at four o'clock UK time. And I'm sorry, I know that's not the most convenient time for you, uh, US people or Canadian or whatever. Um, but you can always watch on replay. It's not going anywhere. It'll always be here uh, until we get it finished. So it'll be one live every day until it's completed. Which may be a long time. <laughs> Maybe not. Who knows, eh? I'm not known for being the fastest worker. But I like my details. But I'm going to try not to be too detailed. Honestly, I am. So wipe your palette knife off. Don't let it dry on it. You'll ruin your knife. Now then, for this... Uh, oh, that's not quite dry. Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to dry this, people. It's very, very humid here. It's warm, but it's really humid, which uh, doesn't help much. So, sorry. Right, okay, so we're nice and dry and ready to go. I am surprised that that was still damp and it must be purely to do with the humidity, I think. Right, so what we need to do then, I think, is start with a medium uh, value grey, which is probably the actual grey straight out of the tube grey. It's, it's an Elliot abstract one, it's called neutral grey. So it's quite neutral. So I'm using my Deerfoot stippler. Mine's from Jackson's. Other people do retail them. Uh, and I'm not putting it in water first. This is the only brush that I can think of that you don't um, put into the water first. You won't get such a nice effect if you um, make your brush damp. So using it dry and pouncing it in the paint to pick up paint. And we'll, we'll just start to put this down. You see the very, very nice effect that you get. As I say, I'm not, you know, I'm not slavishly copying um, the, the clouds that are before us. I mean, that would just be soul-destroying and, and a little bit daft. But I do need some darker clouds because there are some shadows down in this part of the world. This is a nice thing to do, actually. I, I, I find this quite therapeutic. There is a patch here of blue, and I am going to kind of stick by it. So are you guys all right with me doing a live every day this this week? I appreciate, you know, that you might have work to go to or school runs or... Oh, no, you won't have school runs. It's holiday time. Um, but, you know, as I say, you can always watch on replay. So... I mean, if you don't want me to do it, I'll just get through an hour today, do an hour for you and leave you to your own devices. Which sounds a bit mean. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but I have now got a Patreon channel. Um, I used to ask very kindly for donations and very kindly 
some of you did donate to me. And the reason I wanted the donations is so I could carry on buying art supplies and doing free videos on YouTube so as everybody can learn. Um, but that, although I did get some donations, I didn't really get enough to make much of a difference, really. Um, and so I decided to join Patreon, which is an American site, um, but a lot of artists have pages on Patreon. Um, if you follow Clive Five Art, for example, he has a Patreon page, um, Jason Morgan, um, Angela Anderson, loads of people that you will know have Patreon pages. And the reason for that is you are sort of donating, but you're getting things back in return. So I've got three tiers on mine. Uh, I think it's a $5, it's in dollars, $5, $10 and is it 25? I can't remember. It might be 15 or it might be, I can't remember. And each tier enables you to slightly more. But, you know, you pay once a month, you're in charge. If you don't want to uh, pay to play anymore, you just you just feel you just click that you don't want to be there anymore and that's it they just don't take the money out um so you can leave any time that you like um but it will i know it will make a huge difference to me and what we are able to put out on youtube for free every month you get depending what tier you're on you get you know full length videos and some of them are eight ten hours long um so it's worth it. I, I, I think it's worth the money that you're paying. And all you have to do is pop over to www.patreon.com and look for me, Miss Paint a Lot, and decide where you want to go from there. I'm just going to put a little bit of this blue grey in here. So it just it's just getting a little bit bluey, more bluey towards the horizon. Now it's a bit time consuming, but it's a when you're at this stage, you'll really enjoy it. It's a lovely thing to do. Just kind of pleasant movement. Just above these hills, it really is quite blue. As are the hills actually because because of the old atmospheric effect so when we come to paint our mountains in we have to be very aware that that is the case Sherry has joined us hello Sharon. Nice to see you, Sharon. Thank you for joining us. I see a lot of you have been, um, I see you there because I'm there, watching Paula doing a mixed media pieces. Um, and Susan and Sharon have had a go. And my goodness, you've done really well, ladies. You really have. I know Paula is proud as punch that you had a go at her work. Like I am when you do my work. And and generally the people that do my work and share my share the pieces are Susan and Sharon. And I'm really grateful to you ladies. You're um you're great. Great at keeping things going for me. If you know anybody who you think would enjoy this or benefit from it or just like to sit and sit back, kick back and relax and watch us do this, please feel free to share it to them. I would appreciate that. Generally, if you're an artist, you know somebody else who's an artist, I might just like to watch this. You never know, they might join our page. I'm just going to put this darker around here. I don't really want to cover up my um, transfer marks. I don't want them to 
to remain quite crisp. This is quite a dark broody sky at the minute, but it will change. I, can, I still can't see your face, Karen. I can't see it. Afterwards, you'll have to send me a picture with it circled where it is exactly. Well, I kind of thought we wouldn't get a whole lot more than the sky done today. And looks like I might be right. But that's good because if you've got um if you've got a 16 by 12 piece of canvas or canvas or whatever, or you know, re resize it to whatever suits you, of course, um then you can get this sky done overnight or whatever and be ready to join tomorrow. I used to do on YouTube um, sort of a series where every week, every, no, twice a week actually, I added another episode to it. But not very many people joined in and so I rather felt I was talking to myself a little bit. So for this series, it's just going to be every day. Um, so don't lose your interest because it's, you know, you've only got to wait a day for the next bit. Right, so I think I think we'll get in there. Let's just get rid of this blue bit. Uh, so that you post the pictures of the print. Karen you should do it for you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Karen. I think you put the print on there. On the original post on saying post. when I was going live, yeah. Right, so that's kind of the dark broody bits done. Now we need to, I mean, we might need to go back and, and tickle those up a bit, but um, it's what you really need to make sure of is it's random. Don't, don't get shapes that are the same reappearing or, you know, just try and make it as random as possible. And your brain doesn't like that. Your brain doesn't like random. It likes things to be organised so it can really you know, compute quickly. So you've got to work on random a bit. So I'm just brushing out a lot of that dark brown from there. And I'm going to move on to this one, which is the, the grey mixed with titanium white. And this is going to look very light now, um, although it's definitely not white. We've put quite a lot of um, titanium white in there. So this is really just making making cloud shapes. And this is where the steer foot stippler is really, really good. Um, just checking that was dry because it just looks like it's picking up just a little bit of paint here. Um, and that's not what you want. I was, sorry guys, but I'm just going to have to dry this a bit. Right. The problem that you have is if you paint over acrylic that isn't dry, it starts to pull the underneath off. Um, and that's, that's not what we want. So we're just making quite light, fluffy sort of marks in the sky and we're trying not to get them following a pattern. It's okay to leave the dark grey at the bottom that's usually where the dark grey is because it's almost it's a shadow of the cloud 
so we can leave the grey towards the bottom. I mean, here for example, the cloud goes on further over. This is just our horizon. It's not the end of the world, <laughs> surprisingly. Although people did used to think that, didn't they? The flat earth people. Some people probably still do. Yeah, I'm sure some people do. Don't. No religion here. <laughs> Religion, it's philosophy. Well, then, no philosophy here, then. So you can build up this, um, this colour. And you can make it soft as well, if you want to. But it's quite a good idea just to put one light coat on first. See what it looks like, and then go back with either a lighter or a darker colour. That would be my advice. So this is where the, the blue is going to be peeping through. It's a good idea to take your time with this. You could do this really quickly, um, but it shows. You know, just take your time. There's no rush. There is no rush. You shouldn't be painting in a rush. Should you, Mr. Fix? Definitely not. It's ultimately for relaxation, really. I'm just going to leave that little bit of blue peeking out up there. And maybe some other little bits down here. Yes, of course, you're doing the white lines down the middle of the motorway, in which case yeah. it's a good idea to get a move on. Yeah, that is true, actually. Around this blue is going to be much whiter, like the crystal white that I was telling you about, because that's, you can, you know, that's where the sun's coming through so it's catching these uh, the tops of these clouds and some areas quite dark and don't forget we can always come back in with darks if it's beginning to look a bit busy Looking slightly better to me than it is on my screen, I must be honest. If you don't want to do this sort of sky, do it blue. Uh, not not that, I'd add some white to that, it's a bit strong for a, just a sky on its own. Um, and start off with the darkest colour at the top. Keep adding white to it a little bit as you come down to the horizon. And then it's up to you whether you want to add clouds to it or not. Uh, you don't have to. And there you'll have a simpler sky. And that on a landscape like this is not a bad thing. Because really it shouldn't be about the sky. It should be about the, you know, chronic water, chronic water whatever it's called. Um, it shouldn't be all about this sky. We've still got a bit of work ahead of us, really, with this sky. It's kind of maybe halfway through. But we're going to have to come back in with some darker grey again along the bottom of some of these cloud banks. Okay, so we made a start. So I'm just going to mix a little bit of the grey, a little bit more of the grey into that uh, colour that we're using now. So we've got a slightly darker grey. I'm just going to come in and make some of these a little bit darker. Oh, she said she was having stormy weather and kept losing the electricity and the internet. On, on, on our, we're streaming all right, but yeah. on the actual Facebook page, it keeps restarting to the start. Uh, I'm assuming other people are actually keeping up to date with what we're seeing. Right. Yeah. But the worst comes to the worst. We are recording as well as streaming, so we can right. put it up later. 
and Susan says she's not had a minute to paint as she had a water pipe leak in the utility ceiling. Oh, no. Oh, what a pest. Her husband put up new plasterboards and she's just been sort of texting them. Oh. Live without that sort of thing, Susan. She could have done a Sistine Chapel on it. Yeah, you could have uh -huh. done. You could have uh -huh. done. That was your chance there. Right there, girl. So I'm just starting to add some darker colours to the bottom of these cloud banks and sort of give them a bit more substance. I don't know what that looks like to you, but it's looking much better to me. And they're sort of joining up really. I suspect that they don't actually join up. I suspect there's miles between them really um, up in the sky. It's just when we look, they're all sort of condensed. Just make the, the bottom of them this darker, darker grey. Acrylics, guys, as you know, it's all about layers, really is. All, all about layers. Getting the ultimate effect that you want. It's hard getting a straight line with this um, the foot stippler because it's it's round, makes that round mark. I don't really want to put any more glare. I'll use that glare there. It's going to be a bit darker, but we'll be. Alright. just in the bottom of these like I say it's a shadow it, it really is a shadow of the cloud my goodness it is so humid here isn't it it is ridiculous like the in here. <sighs> there's quite definitely going to be a thunderstorm Let's hope that we're, we've finished our life by the time it goes. Our electricity went off. Was it last week? It's just restarted again for some oh. reason on there. Oh. I think we're all right then. We said that they keep forgetting the no. groundhog day, so we'll assume it's streaming all right. Right, okay, I'm quite happy with that level of grey on there. Now I need to come in with. Um, a lighter but probably not white but not far off it so I'm going to use this this color which was the gray mixed with white and I'm going to mix that into the titanium white so I've got really quite a light color here going on um, this is going to be a bit of a statement color it'll look like a statement color when we put it on um, but it'll dry back oh, glory I've got so much paint on that brush ridiculous So in places, I am literally just kissing the paper. No, I'm not literally kissing the paper. Figuratively. <laughs> yeah. I don't like when people say that, so I don't know why I said that. Um, it is the lightest of touches, as if it were a kiss. So it's just sort of... Round here I'm going to leave because that's going to be very very bright white and then just on the top of some of these that we put the shadows on so just be patient patient with yourself just gonna have to wipe this brush out because I'm getting sort of a repeat design from it if you like 
and I want random. So I'll give it a good clean and see if that helps. It's health and temper. I think we're getting somewhere now. It looks lots darker on the screen than reality. But that's all right. I sort out the colour correction later, but I want like a fiddle. Don't fiddle for heaven's sake. Lose the stream. We'll lose it, we'll lose everything. Again. So just the top side, as you see them, of these uh, cloud banks here. There's Nancy Gordon Model says so she's expecting 100 degrees and high humidity in Southern California. Glad we don't live in Southern California. I mean, it sounds idyllic. I must be honest with you, Nancy. Um, thank you for joining us, by the way. I think you must be one of our newish people. Um, when people say Southern California, you think, oh, how lovely would that be? But no, I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. I'm not built for it. I'm too large. The Arctic tundra. I, I am actually. I'm built more for the Arctic. You know, when people put layers and layers to keep to keep warm, I'm there already. I have just done a dog, um, and that's just uh, waiting to to dry properly, and then it will be off on its way. Uh, and then, no, I'm free, free as a bird which is quite nice. I mean, I like doing people's commissions, but it's such a responsibility when you've got it done and you, you know, you send them a, a picture and then you're waiting for them to come back to you. And it's like, you know, one hour, two hours, nothing's come back. No, oh, please. You know, just if it's wrong, just tell me it's wrong. But um, generally in the end, we've, uh, we've done all right. Uh, I haven't had to do any, um, as they call them, revisions. So I'm just going in with the white round here because this is really light where it's where this, the light's coming through um, through the clouds, obviously. And I'm going to put um, when that's dry. I'm just going to put the tiniest little bit of that. Crystal white and see if it makes it zing. There's just a line of sort of white along here. And I'm paying a little bit of attention to where um, where there might be lights and darks, simply because it's going to have an effect on what's down on here. Here. It's a bit like a volcano to be fair. So we're beginning to get there, we're beginning to look like a sky. And quite a lot of, uh, of light in it. Actually, it's not perhaps as much grey as, as I've put in it. Maybe got carried away a bit there. You can do yours as you wish. As I say, if you just want to do it as blue sky, uh, no clouds, couple of clouds, whatever. 
it'll be fine. Not sure I completely believe that blue there. This one I do. Um, let's see what I can do with this one here. Don't rinse your um, your do foot stippler out between colours um, for the same reason you won't get that, that lovely mark making that it does. It just goes wet and floppy, and we don't want that. We don't need that either. Drink your coffee, Glenda. <laughs> it's time to clean your mark. What I mean, dust it or what? Let's close that. I have no need to clean my mark, thank you. Right, so let's have a look at that then from a bit of a distance. It's still, I think, a bit on the busy side. What do you think, Mr F? Yes, possibly. Yeah, so I think I'll... I'm just going to mix a real, a lighter medium colour. He says it can be from 75 degrees at Donatus's at the beach, 85 downtown, 100 degrees in the valleys, and 80 in the mountain area where she lives. Wow. I hope you haven't been troubled by those awful fires that we see uh, on the TV. Oh, they seem so frightening. Really frightening. I hope you've been safe without any loss to life, limb, or your home. Right, okay, so I think that bit there is is pretty done. I quite like that. I'll go in with the crystal white after and um, hopefully zing it up a bit. Just need to get the idea of these cloud banks in. Big, heavy blocks. I've got all my paints out today from the mountain, so I'm ready. <laughs> it's light grey all the way along there. And so you do have to try and break it up because uh, your eye just naturally wants to make it a, a pattern, a recognisable pattern. You've got to have the underneath in or you can't do this. So don't despair. You know, remember what Angela Anderson says, every painting goes through an ugly stage. So don't throw your hands up in despair and say, oh, it's awful, I can't do this. You can. You Absolutely, you can. Um, just take your time with it. Take your time and know that it will have many layers on it and it will change and change and change as you go until eventually you get it exactly as you want it. I quite like that. I think that's good. And I'm now going to move to this, what I believe to be super duper crystal white. It's probably not going to show up as anything different um, until it dries. Maybe not even then. But it is supposed to be a very, very... And also, I mean, what what's not helping it is we've got other acrylic on the brush. So let's give that a bit of a... Bit of a clean out and go for that. So there's a, just a little speck here that I just want to draw the eye to, and here. And it's just sort of, it's just coming down. I don't think I've got quite enough on my brush. 
you don't have enough on your brush it won't leave that nice mark too much on your brush and it won't leave it either incidentally and this comes across here A little white flash down there in the bottom. And up here, as soon as that, just go gently. You can always go back over it. Just go gently. I feel so much for your face, Karen, because I'm not seeing the face in there at all. Now, I suspect, as with all acrylics, this supposedly wonderful white is going to dry down. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to have to put another coat on it to get it to sing the way I really want it to sing. There's a lot of that goes on with acrylics. If you're new to acrylics, um, where have you been? <laughs> um, but welcome along. We are for beginners. We aim to be. Um, we aim to be for, for beginners. Having said that, a lot of uh, a lot of the people on here have now kind of passed the beginners stage. And, you know, they're thinking things out for themselves, using their own reference pictures, um, which is great. So maybe there's something for everything, everyone. As I say, just another merciless plug here. There is something for everyone on the Patreon page. In fact, at the moment, there's new stuff going on quite regularly. So here there's a bit of a puffiness going on. I think you'd find it difficult to do this with another brush actually. I can't think of another brush that you would get these marks with. I mean maybe there is but this makes it very easy um, and I'm a great fan of my deer foot stippler. It's great for undergrowth, grasses, clouds. It's just a great I'll put a link on the page to the one at Jackson's Art uh, Supplies. If you haven't bought anything from Jackson's before, and I put the link on, you'll get 10% off. But it only works the first time you buy something. Um, so I'll, I'll put the link on to these. But actually, once you're in the Jackson's site, you can buy anything that you want. You don't have to buy this. Um, and you'll get... 10% off when you go to the checkout, assuming it's your first first order. So it's kind of, I think it's worth it. Jackson's have a whole host of everything that you could ever wish for. It is, isn't it, Nancy? I'm impressed by that. I, I, I really am. Just in case you missed earlier what it is, it's this uh, Lasau Studio Lasau, and it's called Crystal White. And I bought it, but kind of with a bit of a heavy heart because I thought, I bet it's just titanium white, really. Not really any different. But they do do a titanium white as well. So I thought, hmm, maybe worth a try. But yeah, I, I quite like that. I think maybe I'm reaching the stage where it's time to leave it alone. Karen said she did see a cat in yours. So she's just got an active imagination. Karen, what are you on, love? <laughs> Can I have some? I don't want to do too much because the sky is quite pregnant. Um, and I want to leave it like that. There's a lovely passage. I don't know if you can see it up here. It's just... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move my board, hopefully, so as you can see this here. Can you see this passage up here? Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. It's turned out really pretty. Um, not really my skill, more to do with the the old deer foot. Of course, you 
because once you put the mountains in, that sky will be pushed. Go right back, back, yeah. And I'm not sure about the amount of blue I've got showing. Um, this may need to get cut down quite a bit, as as might this. But for the time being, we'll leave it like that. We know what to do to, to push it back. You know, get in there with the colours that we've already used. And uh, dog's going mad out the back. I was just wondering what was going on. He's found little Jack Russell to play with. Yeah, so I mean, as with anything, you don't want to overdo the highlights. Otherwise, the cease being highlights. Says she merrily carrying on. Yeah, okay, let's leave that. I think we've got a bit of a ring around this cloud that I'm not... Yeah, we definitely have. I'm not overly keen on that. I'm just going to trail it off a little bit over here. Maybe down here a little bit. Let's get rid of that shape. I didn't like it. Okay, I, um, for today, I'm finished with the sky. We'll see when we start putting the mountains in if it's too dominant in our picture or not. Um, but it's saying a lot, that sky. It's saying a lot. So I'll just pop that in the water. If I was going to do more to it, I would wouldn't pop it in the water. I'd leave it out. Looking good it is. Turn it to yoga. Looking good it is. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. And Carol says she's got back. What board what? paper are you using and what can you use for acrylics? The this is a Jackson's art board. It's like canvas that's stretched over cardboard. Like that. Yeah. Um this is it. They come in three mils and four mils, which I think is the thickness. Um, this is the premium one. It's four mils. There's not a whole heck of a lot of difference, to be honest, between the sizes. Um, and they're quite a cheap way for me to have a good, a good thing to paint on um, to show you, because canvases, etc., can be a little bit pricey. So what I'm going to aim to do in the little few minutes we've got left is try and get this hill well actually there's one behind it so I'm going to try and get that in and that in which will involve more than you think because it always does um, the the back one I want to go for tealy blue I've still got some blue out and I got my teal out earlier on sent something flying but I don't know what One hour, is it? I'll just put this little background here then. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't think there's anybody waiting to get on live after me. Paula's live at seven tonight doing her thing on a mermaid. So you need to get your tea now or your lunch or whatever it is. Get your feet up and watch Paula later on. And then you'll have had me and her double whammy today. So let's know, does Jackson ship to the US? I believe they do. Um, because on some of the Facebook groups that I'm a member of, it's it, they talk about Jacksons and they are in America. But I'm not sure if you wouldn't have to go to jacksons.com. Is, is our site .co.uk? .co well, it's the one site. Right. It's just you can choose, choose where you're from. Okay. Shipping. Right. So this is the brightest teal in the world, and it's obviously not right. <laughs> For what we want. So I'm going to use a bit of this bluey grey that I mixed up and mix that through a little bit of it. The thing about hills, mountains, whatever they are in the distance, anything, a house, whatever it is, it always blues down because of the atmosphere that's in between you and what you're looking at. The further away it is, the more atmosphere there is, so the more dust particles and everything else that stops you having a clear view of what you're looking at and the colour that it is. And it imposes this bluey tinge to it. And if you don't get that bluey tinge in, your picture will not read properly. You won't have a background coming to a foreground. They'll just all be foregrounds. So don't um, miss a trick. Make sure that you get um, 
Um, let's put a little grey in there. Make sure you get your background uh, colours in. A tealy sort of colour is very good for background uh, mountains. That's just still a little bit light. I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of black to that and darken that down. Yeah, that's a good colour now. So that colour was actually teal. It was the sky blue, the grey and the black all mixed together. Um, but it has given us a really nice colour for there. And I just need really the teensiest, tinesiest little paintbrush. Um, I'm just going to use a quarter inch angle shader. Those of you that know me will use it. I use this for everything, so it's like not a huge surprise that I've selected that. Um, dump your brush in the water. It just makes it more receptive. It does two things. It makes it more receptive to the paint, so that you can pick up more paint, and it makes the paint flow more easily off your bristles. I know I'm repeating myself, and Susan and Sharon and everyone knows because I've said it a hundred times, but I'm just not sure that we haven't got new people with us that would benefit from from knowing that. So this is just a tiny little mountain way in the back and it needs to be that colour. So we can at least say that we've started putting the mountains in. I think even my quarter inch brush is too big. No, I'm not going to do details today. <laughs> oh, lordy. So I'm just going to add some water to that. This technique that I'm doing now, I appreciate if you're a new starter, you won't know what I'm doing. I haven't got time to explain it now. I will explain it tomorrow. This is just a little round brush. I'm just putting that mountain in. So she had a birthday on Thursday and we drank it last night, wine with leftovers, so maybe it didn't mix with her meds. <laughs> Which is why she's seeing animals in the sky. Karen, <laughs> what an admission! <laughs> what an admission! <laughs> oh, have you sobered up yet? Have you actually got a headache or are you still under the influence? I'm just going to dry this off because it needs another coat really and then we can... Uh... It's sad to say, I think that's probably about... No, all the hour done in. So when we come back tomorrow, be t same time, four o'clock, we'll have a look at what the sky looks like, see if it's just a bit in your face, really. Um, that's dry, so I'll just pop another coat on him. And uh, people are happy. Do you want to carry on for a little bit? Is it fine? People are happy. I think so. Oh, okay, that's good. Right, so that's that far distant mountain. Um, now, what I aim to do with this one is, it's this part here that I'm talking about. Now, it has green in it. We can see it. It's like green. And it has sort of blue vegetation in it, a little bit of purple perhaps. So what I intend to do is paint that in the greens and the purples and whatever that I can see and then put a blue glaze over it because it is all uniformly the same distance away from me. So it's got the same bluey cast to it, which we will apply with glaze, glazing medium. That's the plan, guys. That's the plan. That's well, nice of you to want to stay with me. I'm really happy to have you. I thought you'd all be going, no, enough, enough already, thanks. You bored me already. So I need an olive green, I need some purpley colours, um, I need quite a dark green, which I might, might just mix that with purple. Uh, it is uh, jacksons.com. Jacksons.com. We do ship internationally. All right, and, excellent. And you can change the settings on the website, change it to dollars as opposed to pounds. All right, so they can go in via my link and sure. still have it sent to America. Yeah. Well, that's great news, isn't it, guys? I mean, 10% off. So all I would say to you is make sure that you order, you know, what you what you want to order um, when you've got the 10% off. 
put the link on as soon as the live. As soon as the live's over, Mr. Fixer will put the link on. This is dioxazine purple. It's very, very dark purple, and it is one of the strongest colours you ever come across. Its tinting power is quite remarkable. I'm not put well I will put this out actually. I could mix it from the purple and white, but I've got it in a tube, so let's use it. It's just a, a light lilac y sort of colour. Right, so let's pay attention then. Pay attention guys. Uh this bit that meets up with here is um olive green. That we can do. That's relatively straightforward. So let's put that in. And we've got a starting point. So comes down here. I must say painting against that pink is very nice. And I hope it's going to cast a, a really nice warm glow to our painting. This hasn't got much covering power. This olive green. So I may just have to mix it with some titanium white and that's kind of the secret of getting through very transparent colours is add something opaque to it um, so titanium white is opaque so of course it'll lighten your colour so it's a bit of a trade-off really so I'm just adding a bit of titanium white in through that um, olive green and let's put another coat down you see how much it's lightened it but it should also make it opaque for us. We can come back in and put some more in if we need to. It, it doesn't sort of come to a standing stop this. It fans out on the hillside. So I'm just using the edge of my brush to push it away so as we don't have a, a rigid line. Okay so the next thing we need is a kind of purple and it's it's a really light purple you know it's only purple if you really squint your eyes but it is purple so I have the choice do I use this one which is out the tube I could use the diox purple and mix it with white or I could use that purple uh, that those are my choices and there's always choices in this isn't there I think I'll use this purple and add a bit of titanium white to it. It's nowhere near that strong. But I might not be too far off there actually. I could do with a, a bit of yellow just to grey that out a little bit. Those of you that watched the um, thing that I did about the colour wheel will know that yellow and purple are opposite each other on the colour wheel. And if you mix them together, you get a grey. It's called a grey, it might be a brown, whatever, but it, it uh, desaturates the colours. So if I add this yellow, which is yellow uh, oxide, no, it's raw sienna, sorry, to um, the purple, it will neutralise all of that. I can't get my lid on. Um, it'll neutralise an awful lot of that purple, but still give us a purple. A little bit more. Yeah, I mean that's that's perfect shade there. I hope you can hope you can see that. Yeah, I think you can. So I started with the purple, I added white to it, but it was too purple. So in order to desaturate it, dis <laughs> hello <laughs> desaturate it, I added some something out of the yellow family it happened to be raw sienna um, and this then comes up here because there's not really that much color up here and we are going to put a blue glaze over the top as well so it does come down all the way down to here Oh, I don't know what that is. My phone doesn't usually do that when I'm filming. Um, so I'm just going to fill fill that in and we'll come back and put some storms in once we've mixed up the appropriate colour. I'm just going to dry that, guys. Sorry. 
Sorry about the noise. That's fine. I'm just going to give it another, another layer of that. So it's just allowing too much of my pink through. That's lovely. That is a lovely colour. Um, you know, to make a mauve, mauve colour and then desaturate it with its complement, which is yellow. You can do the same, you know, reds, if you put a green in it, you can desaturate it. Um, blue, orange, they all work and they all give you that, you know, really good effect. An email from Etsy, yeah. Interesting, like I don't need it. So I'm just going to add to that a little bit of, uh, to this colour that we have now, I'm going to add a little bit of grey. I'm casting around for some grey because I haven't got very much. And this is going to be my stone colour. So it's grey into that light purple that we had. And the stones are fairly sort of obvious. There's no point in doing too, too much detail here. And, you know, I, this is me telling you that. So <laughs> please believe me. I love detail. And I'm usually caught up in it horrendously. But this is way far back. Um, we want to know that there's stones on this outcrop, rocks lying. But that's all we need to know about it, really. Don't need to know anything more. And I'm just going to get a lighter colour. Um, I haven't got any of that grey left, so I'll just use a bit of this titanium white. Um, it's going to have to be this grey. It's the only one I've got. Just roll your round brushes before you pick them up. And let's just put some... I don't think that's dark enough. It's into there. I'll just do this mountain and then then we'll be off. Because I'd like you to, if you can, to catch up this evening. Um, and then you can see what we what we're doing tomorrow. I think I'll get this dark enough. Go dark. That's got to be dark enough now. So I'm just drawing some sort of shadows on these rocks. The sun's coming this way. Don't forget it's coming out through here. So now we've got some shadows. We need just a little touch of highlights. Um, which would be the white mixed in with that. I've got that on my brush now, so I'll just move it to here to mix up a light colour. <coughs> just perhaps a bit of dry brush in if you can. If you can. So you can sort of see the mauve underneath it and the rocks, which are that sort of colour, and then these rocks sitting up on top. I think that looks fine. It's probably, that dark colour is probably much more than we needed. And I think we need to revisit the um, olive green it's got lost somewhere along the way. It's definitely there, so. There 
there we are. We'll just give that a blue glaze and I think that'll be fine. So for the blue glaze we're using the glue that we used for the sky because that's what would be reflected down onto it and it'll keep our picture harmonious and we need glazing medium. I use De La Rowney, uh glaze medium. Other glaze mediums are available and are equally as good I'm sure. I just happen to have quite a large pot of this so I use away at it. Uh, where's my palette knife? So just get a bit out that you think you might need. Oh, do you hear? Thank you. Yeah, I love purple. I love purple, I love olive green and teal. The face is back. Looks a bit like Michael Myers. <laughs> do we know who Michael Myers is? No. <laughs> That's going to make it difficult looking for him, isn't it? Yeah. Right, so um, what I'm going to do is take my uh, quarter inch angle shader after I've rinsed that off it. This has got way too much detail on it, just way too much. Um, but that's what we know is there. So now we're going to push it back with this blue glaze. And hopefully, that's my glaze, I think. Um, just take some of this sky blue. I'm just bottling it here a little bit, whether I should take some grey as well. I think so. And let's mix that in through the, the glazing medium. Right, so let's try this and see. I mean, we want the blue cast, but we don't want to obliterate everything we've just done either. So, if you haven't got glazing medium, add water to your paint. That's what I'd say. It's not really good for your paint. It causes a thing called underbinding, which um, means your paint doesn't stick properly to your canvas. But, to be honest, Unless you're selling this to a museum or selling it to somebody, I think you're all right. I'm just going to dry that and I'm just thinking about giving it another lighter coat. Zoom, in. zoom then, zoom. It's quite nice looking at pink, isn't it, as opposed to just white. I quite like it. wasn't dry. I've <laughs> got a nail mark in it. Just have to leave that as a bit of detail. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to do one more light glaze. I'm just going to add a little bit more glaze in even than I had before, which was a lot. Because it's not so easy to take this stuff off, it's easier to just add it. I kind of wish I hadn't done that with my nail. Never mind, I did. So you see there, we've got all the colours that we put in, all the detail that we put in, but it's now looking credibly as a background mountain because we've pushed it back. We've made sure it's back. So just while I'm on that same colour, I'm just going to go over. Oh, I couldn't do that without, with my big brush. Just get my small brush. Let's pick up a bit of that glazing blue. And I'm just going to go over this very back mountain that we really can't see very much of at all. But it is our furthest away point. So it's worth recognising it as that. So there you go, that's uh, one mountain in. 
I think it looks looks okay. Please, with that, you please with that, Mister F. Mister Fix is a bit of a climber. He he always has been, and um, of course now he hasn't really got anybody to climb with. This does not go uphill very easily. Um, so he's, he's fretful because we had that day in the Lake District and he saw all these mountains that uh, he wants to now go and climb them all. So anyway, guys, thanks for sticking with me. I will see you tomorrow at four o'clock where we'll discuss whether this sky is too much, too little, whatever it needs. May not be able to determine that until we get a bit more in, but we are... Looking forward to joining you next, uh, tomorrow. I'm looking forward to this whole week's worth of work and at the end of it, and dying to see what you've made of it. I really am. And that's the best bit of all when, when you show me what you've done. So I'll see you tomorrow at four. Thanks very much for sticking with me. Bye now.